Hi everyone, and welcome to Octave's uh, developer session. This is the first of a series of live events uh, for IoT developers around Octave, the edge to cloud data orchestration platform uh, by CIO Wireless. If you're not familiar with Octave yet, uh, I would uh, recommend you to check out Octave tutorial videos uh, first. You can uh, find them on uh, CIO Wireless uh, YouTube uh, channel. Speaking of which, this session is recorded and will be added to our YouTube channel uh, very soon, in the coming days. We are planning to do these uh, What's New with Octave uh, sessions uh, on a regular basis uh, to show you new or uh, recently updated uh, features uh, in Octave and answer your questions live uh, regarding uh, these features. So use the chat at any time uh, for your questions. We'll either take them on the fly uh, when we can, or uh, we'll uh, keep them uh, for the Q&A uh, part uh, at the end. We hope you will enjoy uh, this format. Uh, please stay with us until the end, and uh, please answer the short exit survey uh, to help us improve this format, uh, this program in the future. I'm Thibault Campbell. I'm in charge of the developer program at CRLS. And today I have the pleasure to introduce uh, two of my eminent colleagues uh, in uh, Octave team. I've named first uh, Augustin Montsaint-Jean. Hi, Augustin. Augustin Hello. is a senior manager and Octave solution architect. Uh, and Augustin will present the four UI uh, features uh, you see uh, now on the screen uh, that we have recently uh, deployed or updated in Octave. And then, uh, Julien Vermillard. Hi, Julien. Hi. Uh, Julien is a principal engineer and Octave system architect. And Julien will present a feature I know a lot of you guys in the developer community are waiting uh, for, uh, namely USP, Universal Serial Protocol. And Julien will do a live demo uh, of it as well. And with that, Augustin, over to you for the first feature. Thank you, Thibault. Um, so yes, I'll be introduce you, uh, introducing you to uh, four um, new features or updates we've provided to the uh, Octave system, and namely Octave UI. I won't go into the details um, uh, of some other things, but uh, I'll show things through the UI, but everything is also available through the APIs. Um, so anything you would want to do in your system, you can also the, use the APIs to, to uh, use what I'm going to, to demonstrate to you. So I will be going through four uh, main features. The first one is the device usage metrics. So looking at the data and message consumption of your devices from the Octave use UI. Then uh, looking at handling user permissions. Uh, so you can now invite users to Octave, but also uh, control with a, with a fine grain what users are allowed to do on the platform. We've also added a feature to do some device bulk imports. So rather than importing devices one by one, you can through the UI or through APIs import a whole um, whole bunch of devices all at a time. And something that which is not new, but um, a significant redesign to the resource pages, uh, which help uh, handling your development phases better with a uh, with Octave. So let's start with uh, the device usage. So I'll, and I'll soon, soon jump to the uh, actual UI, but there's a there, there's a new panel in the uh, monitoring part of the Octave UI where you can go and display your uh, device's activity uh, on given periods of time. So let me just switch to the UI. So this new uh, section is provided in the deploy and monitor section and just select usage and from there you can see the whole list of devices in your company and for a given time range you have access to the number of active devices um, per month here and over time and the number of messages consumed by all your devices over these um, these periods of time so now the, the what we brought also is the ability to drill down either uh, on a time-based fashion so you can select click on a month and you have all the details for that given month so number of device active devices per day number of messages per day and it filters down automatically on the number on the devices which have been communicated on that time period now if you want to look at a very specific 
uh, day, for instance, you have a peak, you want to understand what has been happening, you can select that, you know the amount of messages that were sent on that day, and yet you can see that you have had two devices communicating that specific day, and you can see that one device has been uh, using more messages than the other one. So you can typically filter on one specific device, either by entering the device name or selecting it here, or you can also click on this little filter button. It will select that device. So you have the details, number of, of messages sent for this device on that day. You might also then want to um, zoom out and to see what that device has been consuming uh, over the whole month. So you see when this device has been active, what its usual message consumption, and you see that there was a peak on that day. So um, then it will obviously depend on what you're actually doing in monitoring, but you have a, a full a way of fully getting down to the details of what is had, uh, what is have, um, what happened in terms of consumption uh, with your system, and you have a direct link to the device. So let's say you want to look at this specific device that you saw had a had a spike or has not been communicating. You can just click on the device here and it will bring do, you to this specific device page and then you can look at what is running what is implemented on that device and um, figure out uh, why it has been behaving um, uh, as you can see in the in the device usage so really convenient feature um, that um, that that you can use to really figure out with details and check uh, first of all that your devices are using the system as expected So let me now switch to uh, the rights management, user rights management, which um, mainly re uh, relies on creating user groups. Uh, so users that you can now invite belong to groups, uh, can be several groups, each group having a certain um, level of access rights. I'll going to uh, show that to you in the UI, but in short, you have uh, a full control of the read and write access to the main Octa fun functions that you know, edge actions, connectors, cloud actions, blueprints, the company level access, the user level access. You can also um, define with a fine grain which devices uh, and which streams the user may uh, have access to in either read, read or write mode. Um, so for devices, device streams and global streams in the company. And what I will also show you in the UI is that you can make groups permanent or temporary. Uh, temporary uh, obviously being for uh, inviting uh, either uh, a business person or someone to provide support to you during a, a given period of time. You can easily define uh, some groups to, to handle that. So let me just switch to the UI and guide you through the, through the groups. So this is present in the uh, manage section where you have access to both users, first of all. So from there, you see your list of users. You can invite users, um, pick up their email, and from there, you select which groups that user will access to. And you can also check by which rights are granted to the user based on the group that you assign to them. So it's really easy to check when you invite a user to cross-check which level of rights they will be um, having access to. So here I'm creating some users which are just a viewer with the ability to, to read some things. And I'll show that to you with more details, um, looking at how you actually configure, configure groups. The other thing you can do, you might want to add some rights to existing users. So you can select a list of user and you can um, you can remove groups or add some groups to uh, these users after after um, after their first invitation. Now let's look at the groups themselves and look at the details of uh, the level of granularity you can um, provide to users. So you have predefined groups. You can create your own groups and you can either edit them at any stage or create a new group if you need to provide a specific level of uh, access to certain kinds of um, certain kinds of users so let's just edit one kind of group and i will show you what you what you can do with that 
So as I mentioned, uh, by default, a group provides uh, uh, indefinite access to, to users, but you might want to provide temporary permissions. The group will just be active for, for a given amount of time. You just have to tick that box and then can I either be relative, you want to provide access for, uh, for five days to a certain amount of users, or you can provide an absolute end date and time for that group and the, the rights associated to that group will expire and on that um, on that specific date and date and time and then i'll going to guide you in um, the, the details of which rights you can grant to users so as i mentioned you can provide access in read so you can the user will have access through the ui will be able to consult and look what is configured in terms of cloud action and cloud connectors, edge actions, blueprints, and tasks. So this applies to the UI, but this also applies to the, um, the API token granted to that user. So whatever right you provide to your user applies both to uh, the UI and to the API key for that, uh, for that user. And so you can provide read or write access. And typically admin users have right to have the uh, rights to do some uh, writing and control of the company level information and the user level information. So this is for the main categories. And then you have access to devices. So by default, this is uh, a viewer only group. So th that viewer group has access to read. So device read and device event read for all devices. But if ever you wanted to filter down to a specific set of devices, you can pick any devices, any device you want, but you can also select some tags and let the user, for instance, be able to um, view these specific devices, but also have write, um, read and write control rights on a specific set of devices based on, based on tags. Then last main component that you can control is the access to streams. So in the same way that you provide control to access to devices, you provide access to streams. So by default, uh, you look at the whole uh, hierarchy of streams here, accessible in terms of read only. And then you can drill down if you wish uh, in all the streams that are present in your company and provide if you have company level specific um, streams that you would use, for instance, for your cloud actions, you can uh, provide specific access to given streams to your um, to use to your users. So this is um, this is something that has been introduced uh, two months ago, and it's really a key feature for you to be able to control uh, your users and especially so invite additional users in your company and making sure that everyone who has access is. Uh, able to see everything they need to see uh, but not having control to to the parts that uh, they should not uh, uh, modify for instance then let me switch to device bulk imports so this is a new um, a new feature that has been added to the deploy and monitor um part of the ui and so and in addition and, and in addition to that you also have access to bulk import through the octave rest api so what this means is that as i will show you in the ui you can define a list of devices and import, import them in the system all at once you can also do so by uh, drag and dropping a file to the ui and this is made through the Octave REST API, meaning that by using this API, you can, from your own system, uh, you can basically upload uh, a CSV file through the REST API and have the Octave system handle uh, that list of devices and, and import all of them for you. So the key components and, and the key parameters to import a device are three mandatory parameters the first two ones are the uh, identifiers so the imei and the device serial number and an octave device needs to have a name so you absolutely need to define a device name and based on that you can you can create a device in addition to that what you can do is also um so also define what is the display name that you're going to apply to the device and you can also predefine a set of tags 
to uh, the devices that you import so that once they're in your company, they're already pre-configured to be routed to specific connectors, actions, or be handled in, in certain fashions. So if you want to apply blueprints to them. So something that will be coming in the second stage will be, so it's not yet available, but we'll uh, soon be adding the ability to predefine which blueprints you want uh, to be assigned to your devices as soon as they are uh, as soon as they are imported. So let me just show you that it's really simple to use, but I'll show you demo to you how that happens in the uh, Octave UI. So it's in the deploy and monitor device panel that you have your full list of device as you've had for uh, for a long time in the uh, in the Octave UI and now on top of the uh, simple add device feature you can select this and be in import device mode so which will show you you that you need to provide a device name the IMEI and a serial number and on top of that you can uh, manually import um, a, a display name and here, so you won't see everything on the screen, but I'm just drag and dropping a predefined list of uh, devices with dummy IDs in this case, but you have your list of IMEI serial number and device name. And once you have um, provided your file with proper identifiers, if you just click on import, it will push it to the Octave backend and do all the op all operations to import all these devices, which will then show up a few seconds afterwards in the your in your device list. So it really makes a, a, it much easier than than before uh, to to import uh, tens or hundreds of um, of devices easily. And for uh, more devices than than these, obviously you can you can use the Octave API. Then last change that I will go through shortly um, uh, with the time we have left, I'll just show you a few uh, tips and tricks um, uh, of the new Octave UI page with regards to resources for those of you who are not uh, fully familiar with the Octave resource concepts. As Thibaut mentioned, we have uh, some video tutorials that I really uh, suggest you, you go and consult to uh, know all the details of what you can do with Octave resources in terms of configuring your system, being able to capture device configuration in blueprints, and be able to really simply control your devices through uh, Octave API commands. Um, this is these are, these are really key components uh, for you to make uh, best use of Octave. But so that's the underlying. Um, area that is really really key and we've put some emphasis on, on that for you to to make big, best use of octave then we've also spent some time and, and our ui team has spent some time providing you um, many new tools um, in in the resource page so there's a, a predefined set of filters that you will find really interesting so you have to tick on that filter box to have them appear and let me just switch to the UI now. So you just have to click on this button here to have the filters show up. As you may know, there are um, many uh, configurable resources in an Octave device. Uh, so now you have an easy way by clicking on configured to have a simplified snapshot of all the configured resources, which are often much less than the overall amount of resources um, available on, on the device. So this really makes it easy to have a, a one page or two page snapshot of your device um, status. Then you can also filter on inputs, which are typically resources, which are uh, device telemetry. You can select outputs, which are um, resources that are usually uh, configurable cloud uh, site configurable um, parameters or resources. Um, and so this these sets of filters really make it easier to have a, a full view of your um, of your devices configuration at uh, at one glance. And uh, before uh, handing things over to to Julia, one main thing that we also changed, um, some of some of you might have uh, noticed is that so the UI changed slightly, 
whether you are in developer mode or not. So here I'm in, in, in on a device which is in developer mode. And as you will see, I have all the resources. I have their values and I have an additional column which are reported values. The key thing being that whenever you are in developer mode, the device reports a full snapshot of all resources every minute. So this is why you have um, a value. It can be uh, filled in or empty, but you're sure to have a full snapshot of your device every minute. So that's with developer mode. Out of developer mode, when you disable it, so just switching to a device which doesn't have developer mode, you will see that there's only one column. So you have the configured values, the values that you have asked the device to, to use uh, by default, but you don't have um, a reported uh, value. So before we had the two columns, which sometimes was misleading. Now you know that uh, when you're out of developer mode, what you can do is control your settings from here. And whenever you want your device to report data to the Octave Cloud, you have to go through observations or um, edge actions to control uh, your data orchestration. So for that, those of you who are not fully familiar with those concepts, uh, once again, I invite you to go to our uh, online tutorials to see how you can be, make best use of observations and edge actions to, to build your use case. So now let me switch to uh, Julien, who will be presenting you our, um, the, the USP, so Universal Serial Parser, which has been introduced uh, a few months ago in, in Octave. Julien, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Augustin. So let's share my screen. see it works yeah okay so uh the universal serial parser so it, it, it's a new way uh to connect your DD device to octane so it's an extension of the already supported protocol we have so we have already a uh, mod bus over serial or over um, ethernet um, we have uh, the Octave resource protocol over uh, serial port or UART, and uh, we have can open. And if you have uh, a device which is sending uh, serial frames or can be controlled by serial frames, <laughs> You, uh, you can use this uh, serial uh, parser to extract the data from the any serial um, message. I, I will show you how to configure it, or to send any message back to to, uh, to the device. Uh, so uh, it, it's very convenient when you have um, a simple sensor spitting messages uh, over a serial interface or any proprietary uh, system uh, sending also messages or receiving messages over the same um, UART. So the first thing we need to do for using um, USP is to configure the UART. So the configuration of the UART, if you are familiar with um, ORP or, um, or Modbus in, in, in Octave, you need to put the configuration in the IO config resource. You put the configuration of your serial, serial port, so the port rate, the bit rate, the control flow, etc. And also, you need to specify that the owner of this port uh, is a USP. And then, okay. And then uh, you need to configure a USP. So you need to define a, a framing strategy. So you put that in the slash uh, USP uh, config uh, resource. So first, yes, you need to reference the uh, UART you are using. You need to, so USP is going to accumulate uh, bytes received from the, from the serial port. So you need to specify a timeout. And after this timeout, what USP is going to say is, okay, I, I don't, maybe I don't have received the frame uh, limitation limitations or what I'm looking for. Uh, so this is an error case. I'm going to spit out the accumulated uh, frame uh, to the user. So maybe the user will be able to use it. 
So you need to use uh, this timeout just to limit the time USB is, is going to wait for a full frame. And um, yes, and then, so you have this string mode, but I'm not going to, to cover that. But then you need to specify your framing strategy. And, and for, for that, you have three choices. So first is to specify a delimiter or a set of delimiters. So you specify a set of delimiter, and uh, when USP is going to detect, to receive those bytes uh, from the serial port, is going to finish the detection of the frame and send the frame back to you over another resource. So this one is a very uh, convenient way, one when you have, I don't know, um, ASCII-based protocol where when they are finished, uh, terminated by a carriage return, you put your car carriage return combination in the delimiter and uh, Octave is, uh, USP is going to accumulate this frame and send back you the frame once it's detect uh, the delimiter. Uh, yes, and the other one is uh, fixed. So fixed, as the name say, uh, it's waiting for a fixed amount of uh, of bytes, and uh, uh, and um, and just uh, collect, uh, for example, here 34 bytes. Once USB uh, have accumulated 34 bytes, is going to send that back to you over a resource. Now, of course, it's typically uh, something you want to use in combination with timeout. Uh, for example, if you have um, a device which is sending you variable frames, but without any kind of delimiter or way to detect the end of the frame, you put the maximum size of your frame here and a timeout, like, I don't know, five, uh, five, 500 milliseconds. So after 500 milliseconds, you are sure to get a frame, even if the device is not sending you 34 bytes. And uh, the last one is the lens field. So this one is for um, protocol where you don't have a delimiter, you don't have a fixed size, but somewhere in the payload, there is a lens uh, archive. So for example, uh, here I have a protocol, I have two bytes of header. Then at the end, I have a CRC as a as footer, and I have, for example, four bytes uh payload in the middle so here uh what i uh what i do with usp is i give give it the length field framing strategy i say uh it starts at two the size is two and uh it's big and encoded the size and there is an offset of two so the offset of two is just to specify that we want to accumulate four bytes plus two for the crc uh so once you have configured your um, your usb uh, you are going to receive um, you, you are going to receive data over the value so here i receive some data so uh, the data is received in the form of um, of an array uh, a json array of integer each each integer is um, is a byte Also, uh, you can send uh, data back to the uh, to the machine or the asset you are you are connecting over the, the serial port. So, for example, uh, you can write uh, here. In this example, I'm writing an array of data uh, back to the device. Same format. It's an array of integer. Is each integer is a byte. So, some example of sensor you can connect. So, for example, an NFC reader. For example, NFC readers, they have a, a lens field in the middle, start and stop message, uh, message um, bytes. So you can use either, uh, you can look for the zero three uh, delimiter, or maybe you can try to decode the lens. Uh, there is also, yes, for example, this one is a pH meter from um, Atlas Technology. I don't remember exactly the name, but 
yeah, there is a lot of sensor like that where you, you receive, uh, here you receive an ASCII frame, delimited by a CR. Um, so you can have uh, either UART uh, devices, so UART devices, you connect them to, um, to, uh, to the WP directly, so either using the IoT card slot on, on a Mango Rail on a, or an FX30, or you can have more industrial um, uh, sensor like, yeah, this example is a liquid level sensor. Uh, it's directly uh, connectable using RS232, so if you have um, uh, FX30S, uh, uh, with, uh, you can connect directly the RS232 to it. Or if you are using a Mango, uh, you can try to use um, a UART uh, to RS232 converter card. Uh, but it's not also for um, for sensor for receiving data. Uh, I, I put an example with a, with an actuator. So here it's a, it's a four inch uh, e-paper. But this uh, e-paper um, device you can uh, you can drive it over UART. Uh, most of the e-paper you can drive it over SPI, and you need to build a, a full image. This uh, this UART uh, based e-paper. Um, you can load a, a set of images in the in the SD card, and then with a protocol, not so simple protocol, you can um, you can uh, send commands to uh, display some image or write some text. So I built a small uh, metal st weather station. Let me um, let me switch to that. Uh, so here you are. You should see my webcam. So I have it here. Yeah. So, okay, so let me send up the wizard and then I will show you how I build that. Um, okay. So, okay, so uh, what did this stuff uh, did? So uh, Octave on the cloud is getting the, the weather from a, an open API. Then it's sending back to the device a JSON document with a description. So the, for each day, uh, the kind of weather uh, expected plus uh, the temperature. So here you have the temperature in Celsius uh, and the uh, yeah and the name of the day, but in French. Um, then so let me share my screen. Uh, what do you see here? Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, how we get the, the weather? So here for, it's a cloud action, so on the cloud. You have a cloud action which is connecting to this openweathermap.org API, getting the getting the, the weather. So the weather is looking like that. It's a big JSON document. So for each day, for each day, like here you have D0, you have some start time and you have some information about the day. So you have the temperature and you have somewhere, uh, if I remember, yeah, the icon. So here you have the icon ID. So it's what I'm using. I'm sending that back to the, to the device. Um, so here I just, if you see, I just create a, a file name uh, from this information and I create a document which is sent to the to, to the device. So then on the device, uh, yes, yeah, so we receive, uh, yes, so here. Yeah. So here, yes, yeah, the device receive those informations. So the data to be displayed. And then, uh, Yes, so yes, then using a combination of uh, ejections. Um, 
it's going to transform uh, the, the received um, message into a set of USP message. So here the, the protocol is not so simple. You you have um, you have a set of uh, of uh, yes you have a start a, a start byte here. Then you have uh, depending of what I'm doing you have a set of bytes to send, which is the specific command you want to do. For example, display a bitmap. And then um, yeah you need to also to compute the length. For example, here I'm computing the length. So as you can see, it's not very fancy uh, JavaScript. Uh, it's looking like a bit like a C code. Uh, so you do a byte masking, and you and you can manage to generate uh, your your message. And um, there is CRC. No, there is no CRC. I think on this one. I, uh, yes, there is a CRC. Yeah. Uh, Yes, yeah, there is a end of message plus a CRC here. Yeah, it's a, a CRC computation. And what I do at the end of uh, of my uh, of my action, I just write here uh, directly to uh, to the USP write uh, resource. So if you look at the resource screen, USP value, yes, here you know I send that. And then I receive some message back from the from the from the screen. So here the screen is a bit strange. You have a very complex protocol to to command it, but then uh, what is sending to you back is okay in this case, or a, a, a lo very long message when it's an error and it's you don't have a very nice way to uh, to frame it. So I'm just using the timeout here for for detecting it. And that's it uh, for this example. So, yeah, for for gathering data, it's very simple. But with some effort, with some um, edge actions, uh, you can also uh, control a, a more complex um, device. Uh, just if you want, if you want to use it, uh, just look in the documentation. Universal Serial Parser. You have a guide. Uh, the guide is uh, explaining you everything about it, uh, how to yes, receive data, configure it, uh, maybe use uh, Python scripts for simulating it, and uh, and yes, and uh, all the data are received. So you should be able to try it yourself. That's it for me. Um, I stop share my screen, so then it's Back to you, Thibaut. Thank you, Julien. Thank you. So, I um, guess it is now time for uh, questions and answers. So, if you did not uh, do it yet, uh, please ask your questions in the question or chat uh, box uh, of, of the session. Just uh, I remind you that um, so we ask we are we are answering the questions related to uh, these new features uh, right now. If you have any other uh, question or if we don't have any time to answer all the questions, uh, please use the the form uh, which is written here. Right? You know, I'm sure you know already the Octave form on forum.tiwales.com uh, and. Uh, we, we, we will, uh, Julien, Auguste, and myself, we will uh, take care of your questions uh, on Octave form, definitely. Um, all right. Um, I received uh, one question for you, Julien, regarding USP uh, formats. Um, but uh, I received it by mail, <laughs> and it was in French, so <laughs> I don't know how to translate it. So. Um, <coughs> Uh, Pascal, if you if you want to ask it in English in in the in the chat, uh, I'm sure we can take it. Uh, thank you. Um, so before that, uh, before that, um, I had a very general question on Mango Yellow. So uh, I know some of you guys are waiting for the last Octave firmware on Mango Yellow. Uh, it's it's coming uh, in the you know in the coming days. 
I, 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 was, I was about to say in the coming hours. So very, very soon now. Uh, so please, please be patient and uh, should be released uh, anytime soon. All right. Uh, I don't have a lot of questions uh, right now. Uh, we had a very uh, good feedback on the resources um, uh, page uh, for you, Augustin. Uh, so we had answer, uh, we had enhanced uh, these uh, these uh, resource pages, and uh, I think uh, so. The question was about uh, are we planning to um, to get more uh, to drive more uh, people. For instance, giving the, the ranges, values possible for each field, uh, this kind of thing. So for now, uh, when you set up uh, the, the resources on Octave, um, for instance, if you have to set up some, some value in seconds or et cetera, it's not clearly written what is the range expected. Um, so from zero seconds, one second, uh, you know, 3,000 and so on, this kind of, uh, this kind of thing. I don't know what this time should Want to give a short answer on that? Yeah, I can give an answer on that. That's a very um, that's a very valid point. Um, so, active resources are overall are uh, generic. So the UI does not necessarily know in any case what is uh, what is the range. So it's not something which is there by default. But that's definitely something that we've been working on, and on some uh, on some products and uh, some specific resources. Um, that that's true. In the background, we not now start having more information about what the values mean and what are their ranges. So it's uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely in the bucket list to add those kinds of uh, uh, of helpers uh, to to guide users understand which unit it is, what is the range. That's one first part. Uh, something else uh, we have um, on the roadmap uh, as we are on, on the enhancements as we are on, on that topic. So everything that um, Julia has been showing on USP, so we will have you shortly, uh, pretty soon have USP in the main service UI, so you will not have to go edit your JSON uh, in the resources, but just as for Modbus, iOS, etc., uh, or ORP, you will have a a nice service page uh, where you can handle uh, your USB configuration uh, much more easily. And we're also looking at, uh, while I'm on this service page, looking at adding some more helpers for some other resources, other topics, so not those we covered today, but some generic flags, features at the Octave, Octave system level that you can enable, disable. You, now you have to go to the resources page, but we'll add many of them uh, right in the um, in the service UI. Thanks. Thanks, Augustin. So um, the question for you, uh, Julien, about the USP, and thanks, Pascal, for, for, the, for the translation here. So. Uh, the question is, when using delimiters in USP, how is transparency handled? Um, meaning, uh, when the payload contains a byte uh, with the same value than the, um, the delimiter? So, yeah, so it, it, obviously, if you have a protocol which is using uh, the delimiter inside of the frame, uh, it's probably not so good. Well, it, it's uh, don't try to use delimiter for that because it's not working. It's so when you have this kind of protocol, so it's supposed to be escape to have a way to escape it. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's not really uh, supported by uh, by USP to look at some escaping chars. Uh, so you can try to use simply a timeout or um, and um, yeah, in in general, USP you will find some corner case where you won't be able to um, to use it. So you can try to to use timeout. Um, and yeah, and for example, if you are stuck like uh, this case, you have a protocol where the the start and the end of a frame or something like that are used also, but with some escaping in the middle of the. Um, of the system, maybe yeah, send us a message. Maybe we can take a look at if we can try to uh, to extend USP to, to take care of this kind of uh, situation. And uh, of course, uh, today you have a tree strategy. 
So we have ideas for uh, adding new strategy, uh, like maybe uh, doing some JavaScript to detect your uh, your frame, uh, things like that. So we are looking for feedback to to improve it. It's a very new um, it's a very new feature of Octane. Exactly. Uh, where is the where is where people can give feedback? So. One way is to give feedback during these sessions, and we'll have, we'll try to have more and more sessions like this one. The next one is already scheduled on January 14th. Maybe you saw that already, and you can already register for it. Um, another one is maybe uh, the forum. Um, please uh, use the forum to give feedback as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, another way uh, you guys are thinking of uh, for the feedback. Yeah, typically, in this case of of uh, USP, if you have, a, I don't know, a description of what you are doing, the protocol, post it in the forum, or if it's uh, sensitive, uh, send us an email. Yeah, exactly. And we are all, we, I, as well on the forum, uh, I, I can re, re, uh, remind you that you can um, reach out to us directly in private mode, uh, if you want, if it is something sensitive and so on. Uh, usually we answer here as well, so uh, both Julien and Augustin are active on Octave Forum on Kia Wallet Forum. Uh, I am as well, uh, obviously, so uh, feel free to reach out to us. To us. Uh, I think, uh, so I don't see any other questions. So I guess uh, that's it. We can call it a day for our first uh, session, uh, Octave uh, What's New? If you uh, liked it, so please take the survey. The, when when the station will close, you you'll have a, a, a ending uh, survey, and uh, uh, it will help us to uh, maybe uh, enhance this format uh, and see if you liked it or not. And um, for the next uh, for, for the next session, all right. As I said, you can already uh, register for the next session. Uh, see you January 14th next year, uh, 2021. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Thank Augusta. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Take care. Right. Goodbye. Bye. -bye.